Very quick video, I just got off a cruise. The speaker was Commander Mike West, great speaker about Navy, ships, maritime stuff. Uh, I was telling him about this uh, painting and I thought rather than write him a lengthy email, I would just do a little video. So it's a painting with a little twist, which I'll give at the end. So when I was in optometry school, I built a model of Captain Cook's ship, the Endeavor, and it was a nice distraction from optometry school, obviously. Um, that's what drew me originally to this painting. Uh, you just imagine the forces involved here. Uh, oak is very, very heavy. The ship is made of oak in the early 1800s. And you've got the weight of the uh, ship pushing into the water. You've got the displacement of the water pushing back. You've got the ramrod straight uh, masts, which is due to the uh, ballast in the, uh, above the keel. They would put heavier items at the bottom to... Uh, to keep the ship vertical. And uh, this is obviously a ship of war. I mean, you count the number of um, cannons and portholes and such. So this is a ship of the line, Danish, of course. Christopher Eckersberg, fascinating painter, the father of Danish painting. He could do everything. So here on the port side, we can see the guys loading the last of the cargo onto the ship. Looks like they're passing a small barrel through. And on the starboard side, we see this launch with uh, the oars straight up in the air like telephone poles. You can sense the military discipline here. Now this launch we see coming toward us, you can see there's three occupants and all of them are transfixed on this spectacle that's taking place. One of them very well dressed, probably a gentleman or something, a contractor maybe. So you get a sense of uh, the nationalistic pride and military discipline in this painting. And that's it, right? We're all done, ready to move on? Well, not exactly. To me, there's one little fly in the ointment. Maybe you noticed it. It's literally coming around the bend, and we see it right here, a steamer. Now, if you count the number of sail, sailboats in this uh, picture, it's about nine or 10 to one. So that tells us this is the very, very early days of steam. And no doubt the old salts on this uh, sailing warship probably looked down their nose at this uh, newcomer on the block. Unfortunately, at this time, uh, the early days of steam, they had a nasty propensity to explode. And uh, reading Commodore Vanderbilt's uh, biography, um, the um, ferry operators went so far as to uh, tow a boat behind the steamboat. That way it wouldn't, if it blew up, there'd be less chance it would uh, injure or kill the passengers, which was not exactly a, uh, a uh, brand loyalty builder. So um, the other, pro obviously, uh, very rapidly steam and uh, steam overtook uh, sail and uh, a big problem of, of the sailboats, obviously, was the doldrums, where guys would literally be stuck for days or weeks or, or whatnot and, and with no wind. If there's no wind, the ship couldn't move. And sometimes it got so bad that they would uh, try to tow the, the ship using the uh, rowboats, which must have been brutal. But uh, being stuck at sea without, with only so much provisions uh, would be terrible. Anyway... So, uh, and then, of course, the early, uh, early ships had both sails and uh, steam. So that was sort of a belt and suspenders solution to the problem. And now here's another, uh, another Eckersberg. Very interesting pick. This is more of a human interest uh, item. Uh, sailor taking leave of his girl. And you can kind of read by the body language there. The, the girl is kind of turned away. She's ready to move on. The guy looks a little more committed. Um, but if you look, the hidden meaning here is if you look at the shadow that's cast, it almost looks as if the two are embracing. So um, almost a Shakespearean type of uh, painting. As, uh, as mentioned in Much Ado About Nothing, there's a double meaning in that.